In this video, I'll go over question 5 from the Math SL Paper 1 that was given in May 2015, Time Zone 2. And here we have another calculus question. This one is a legitimately tricky. Um, it's an extension from calculus back to algebra, um, and it has this part B uh, where we have to generalize what we've done in part A. And so we kind of need to get part A right in order for us to have a hope of figuring out part B. You could get follow through points on part B, even if you do A wrong. Um, but if you do A wrong, you may end up with a much harder problem to deal with in part B. So let's try to get part A right. Part A asks us to find f prime of x, which means the derivative, f double prime of x, which means the second derivative, and then this funny notation of f3x, which is indeed the third derivative. And then if there was a 4, they're the fourth derivative. And if there's a 5, they're the fifth derivative. So after prime and double prime, they switch over to just using an index like 3, 4, 5. Um, when it's in the function like that between the f and the x, it means a derivative, not a power. So first we can find f prime of x. We've got to get it right or, or all else will fail. So if f of x equals e to the negative 2x and we have to get its derivative... The most common mistake that gets made is forgetting about the chain rule. So in the formula booklet, we can see that if the function is e to the x, so f of x equals e to the x, then its derivative is still e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x is a true statement. But the derivative of e to the 2x would not be e to the 2x. So that rule is going to fall apart when the power is something more complicated than just x. So I would often teach this as f of x equals e to the smiley face. Then f prime of x will equal e to the smiley face multiplied by smiley face prime, the derivative of whatever that new power is. So we come back over here to the function we're dealing with. We see that the original one is e to the negative 2x, so I know its derivative must start with an e to the negative 2x. That part's true, but I have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, which here is negative 2. So if I clean that up a little, it's negative 2 e to the negative 2x. To get the second derivative, that means I go to my answer from the first derivative and try to get the derivative of that. It is still a chain rule question. The coefficient in front of negative 2 will just stay there, like they will always would for a derivative. The negative 2 from the coefficient stays as a negative 2 here is a coefficient, and then it's e to the negative 2x that I'm trying to get the derivative of, and I know already that that's e to the negative 2x times negative 2. And then I clean this up a little and see it's 4 times e to the negative 2x. Okay, then I'm going to scroll down for a little more space. Then the third derivative go to our answer, keep the 4. I know the derivative of e to the negative 2x is e to the negative 2x times negative 2. You can see what's happening is that each time I'm just multiplying by a new negative 2. So these are my three first, second, and third derivatives, and each one of them is worth a point. So you either get them all right if you caught the chain rule and applied it correctly, or you get none of them right if you miss the chain rule and lose all three of the points. Then, because hopefully you've figured out chain rule and you made a little pattern for yourself, you have a hope of getting part B, which is to find an expression, a general expression, for f to the n any derivative of x. So we basically have to see how does this number right here, the number of the derivative you're trying to find, tell you what the derivative of this function is going to be. It seems like every single one of these functions has the e to the negative 2x in it. No matter what derivative it is, it's going to have that e to the negative 2x in it. The only thing that's changing then, as the number of the derivative chains changes from the first to the second to the third derivative, what's changing is the coefficient. Negative 2, 4, negative 8. We can anticipate what's going to be next is 16. Each time we're multiplying it by a 2, and our signs are alternating. So what we have to realize is that to obtain that negative 2, that 4, and that negative 8, it's the negative 2 from our chain rule raised to the power of the derivative you're trying to find. So here, to the first power. Here it was negative 2 to the second power because it would have been negative 2 from the first derivative times a new negative 2 for the second derivative. And then to get the negative 8, that would have been negative 2 to the third power. 
for the third derivative because it would have been negative 2 from each one of the chain rules up to get up to the third derivative. So if this has made any sense, you might not be surprised to see the answer for this. Any derivative is going to be negative 2 raised to the power of whichever derivative you're trying to find times e to the negative 2x. And that's the answer they're looking for in part b. Um, or they also would have accepted negative 1 to the nth power to show that you're alternating signs. And then um, 2 to the nth, no, just 2. Negative 1 to the nth power to show that you're alternating signs. Oh, 2 to the nth power. And then e to the negative 2x. Um, basically, to separate out the, the coefficient number where that comes from, and then the negative sign where that comes from. And that is all.